All right, guys, in this video, we are going to learn the basics of styling and CSS when it comes to React. There are a couple of options to style React components. The first one is regular CSS style sheets. The second one is inline styling. Third, we have CSS modules. Fourth, we can use CSS in JS libraries, which work really well with React. In this video, we are only going to cover the first three approaches. Learning a CSS in JS library would be a separate series in itself, which I would like to cover sometime in the future. But if you're keen on using a library for your project, I would recommend styled components. All right, let's start with the first approach, using regular CSS style sheets. I'm going to go back to VS Code and create a new file called stylesheets.js. So within the component folder, stylesheet.js. Within the file, I'm going to use the React snippet RFCE to create a functional component. Within the return statement, I will simply add an h1 tag that says stylesheets. I will also include this file in the app component. Make sure to import the component at the top. To specify the CSS for this component, I am going to create a new file called mystyles.css. Within the file, I am going to create a class, primary, and set the color property to orange. Now to be able to use this class in our component, we will have to import it. So in stylesheet component, import dot slash mystyles.css. Now on the h1 tag, we can specify the class using the class name attribute. Class name is equal to primary. If you save the file and take a look at the browser, the text should appear in orange. And you can also conditionally apply a class based on props or state of the component. For example, let me pass down a prop called primary and set it to false. So on the style sheet component, primary is equal to false. Now I can use the props in the component pass props as parameter and within the body let class name is equal to props dot primary then the conditional operator and if it is true we set class name to the string primary if not we set it to an empty string and we are going to use this class name variable as the value to our class name attribute if you now take a look at the browser, you should see the text appear in black. If I go back to app component, pass the prop primary as true, the text will be displayed in orange. So basically what we are doing is reading the value of the primary prop and if it is true, we are setting a value of primary and if it is false, we set it to an empty string and that class name variable is assigned as a value to the class name attribute. Now, if you want to specify multiple classes, the simplest option is to use template literals. So in the CSS file, I'm going to create a new class, font Excel, and I'm going to set the font size to 72 pixels. Now back in the component, we change the value of the class name attribute to a template literal using backticks. So this is going to be backticks. And because class name is a variable value, we include it within dollar curly braces. And then we can specify our second class, font Excel. If you now take a look at the browser, you can see that the text is in orange and also the font size is larger. Both the classes have been applied. 
As an alternative to template literals, there is also a library called class names which you can make use of. It tends to be a bit more cleaner. But this is pretty much how you apply classes using regular style sheets. And if necessary, you can also conditionally apply the class based on props or state of the component. Next up, we have inline styling. I'm going to create a new file called inline.js. So within the components folder, inline.js. Within the file, I'm going to use the React snippet RFCE to create a functional component. Within the return statement, I will add a new heading that says inline. Now let's style this heading. In React, inline styles are not specified as a string. Instead, they are specified with an object whose key is the camel cased version of the style name and the value is usually a string. For example, I can create a new object called heading. So const heading is equal to an object. We are going to set font size as 72 pixels. The key is the CSS property name, but as you notice, it has to be camel cased. And the value is specified as a string. If you want to specify additional CSS properties, Simply add a comma and then list the property. Let's go with color set to blue. Now to apply this style in line, we make use of the style attribute. On the h1 tag, style attribute is going to be equal to the object which is heading. Now let's include this component in app component. And if we take a look at the browser, you should see the text in line with the styling applied. So create an object and apply it to the style attribute. Inline styling is pretty straightforward. Finally, let's talk about CSS modules. CSS modules feature is available with React Scripts version 2 or higher. So make sure you have updated your Create React App package if it is below major version 2. Now there is a file naming convention to be used for CSS modules with Create React App. The file name must be suffixed with .module.css. For example, let me create two style sheets in the source folder. So within the source folder, if app styles.css is a regular style sheet then app styles.module.css is a css module style sheet in the regular style sheet that is app styles.css i am going to add a class error this is going to be color red in the module style sheet i'm going to add a class success which has a color of green now in the app component i am going to import both the files import dot slash app styles dot css and for the module file import styles from dot slash app styles dot module dot css you can see that there is a difference in how we import a module style sheet. Now to use the error class from the regular style sheet, I'm going to add an h1 tag that says error and set the class name attribute to error. To use the class from the module style sheet, I'm going to add another h1 tag success and the class name is going to be styles dot success so we access the class using the import statement variable name so error is our class name in the regular style sheet and success is our class name from the module style sheet and let me quickly correct the spelling if you now save all the files and take a look at the browser you should see both the classes being applied error in red and success in green. 
Now one advantage of using CSS modules is that the classes are locally scoped by default. For example, if I copy the error heading into the inline component and uncomment the inline component, you can see that it still works. The heading error is in red. So the CSS kind of applies to every child component as well. In our code, it applies to app component and inline component, which is the child component. Now this might lead to CSS conflicts. CSS modules, on the other hand, because you reference the class names using the styles variable, it cannot be used in the children component. If I copy the success heading and paste it in the inline component, you can see that the application doesn't compile. It doesn't know what styles is. So you can't accidentally use a class that is defined for some other component. So that is the CSS module approach. We have covered the regular style sheet approach, inline styling, and CSS modules. If you want to try out a CSS in JS package like styled components, please do so by all means. But this is pretty much the basics of styling React components. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.